This video is continuation of part 1 of batch processing. It's a vast topic, hence various areas are discussed at length due to which the video is lengthy. For your convenience, I have placed the video timestamp in the description below. Please utilize them to navigate across different chapters of this video. So far, we understood the concepts in batch processing and now it's time to validate the understanding that we got in the previous video so for that i have created a demo and uh, i i'll start this with a scheduler and then i have a logger i've added this logger just to print the mule home so that we can have a look at uh, the object store and the queue store because the queue gets generated and the object store stores the instance id so th that will be present over here at mule.home so we'll get to know what's the location and then I am reading a file. It's basically a CSV file. So this is the CSV file which has uh, three fields and we are reading that file. And in the batch job, uh, it's all default settings. We have not changed this. I'll keep it as it is. And I have a batch step. And in this batch step, I'll, I'll just l log the data. I'll just log the payload and then let's try to see what happens so uh, the first agenda is to check if the queue is getting generated and an object store has an uh, instance id or not so that's the motive of this so let me add a breakpoint so that when the demo starts and it comes to this step it, it it stops and we can view the queue in between so let's run this project and uh, okay i'll debug this not run this Okay, let's save. So it's getting deployed. So it's deployed, now it will start the bad job. Okay, so the uh, the breakpoint has the flow has come to the breakpoint and i can see this logger Let, let's execute this logger but before that let's see the logs what we have so if we observe uh, it's saying that uh, it, it has created an instance for bad job process records bad job and then it says that it has started the loading phase so it gave the instance an id this is the id that has been given to the instance and then it uh, it has started the loading phase so it's basically loading the file and then it says finish the loading phase for that particular instance it has total of 2386 records so we had logged the mule.home so this is the place where mule.home is so let's go to this location so i've already opened the location this is the location and if I go to this folder, this is the folder which has the data. If I go over here and if I observe the queue store, I should be able to see the file. So see all of those got generated today at 940 and the time is also 941 right now. So it has created the queue and we have we should be able to see the data. Although it's showing the size as zero, let's see. Let's open it and see if we can see uh, find any data in this. So we see a data over here, right? So it's the same data. Uh, it's like how many times? Six times nine and then, so the same row is present, right? Six times nine and the same data can be seen. It's just that it's a, it's in a, a different format and it's not human readable, but still we are able to see some data, right? So, so this is the records are stored uh, in a form of array. So, so we have validated the first point that we understood that it creates a queue and that queue uh, it loads all the data into the into a form of a file and then we also saw that it, it generates an ob, uh, instance id and stores it in an object store so let's just go to the object store and see if we are so this is the partition description descriptor i don't think this will have the data no it's the default partition this won't have 
let's go to the another folder again this is a partition descriptor even this should not have but let's see so it is default persistent object store no so i think it should be in the third folder let's go to this and again this is a partition descriptor let's see in this and it says that batch process records batch job instance store so this particular partition will have the instance details so let's go to the uh, object so this this is the object which will have the data let's open this and if we observe we have the same instance id stored over here which can be seen um, over here right this is 0 4 if I copy this and if I search it over there I should be able to view this so this is the ID that we were able to see so so this shows that the queue gets generated then the object store is having the instance ID also created so this is ha ha helping mule to realize that which instance id has which queue stored uh, in it so even if we observe the queue if we go to the queue so it has the same id even in name it says bsq then the batch job name and then the id that is generated right 04d00 it's the same thing right so so this helps the mule runtime to identify in case of any restarts that okay this is the id and uh, and this is associated with this particular batch job and then it will automatically restart the process in case of any crash or restarts so now if we run the process again it should again complete the whole step so it will take some time to finish it off so we have completed the whole process and if we go back to the queue store the queues are uh, deleted now right so that is what happens once we finish uh, the processing the queue gets removed and the space is uh, freed up so we have seen now that uh, the loading phase happens and the loading phase will load the complete file in the disk space and it also keeps the track of a particular batch job by creating an instance id and it stores in the object store now let's simulate an error scenario where the runtime shuts down while in between while processing the records and we what our understanding is it should recover from where it stopped and finish the whole process right so again we'll run the project we'll just debug it so that uh, we are able to see the queue and we are able to terminate the process in between so that we can simulate that crash time scenario okay so i'll, I'll just debug this project and we'll make sure that the queue generated gets generated and, and we'll see that queue and let's see what happens then so the application has been deployed and the flow has reached the breakpoint and if we observe that we are able to see that uh, it has created a loading phase uh, and has completed as well for this particular instance and if we go to the queue we should be able to see the queue let's go to the queue store and yeah we can see the queue with the same instance id which means that the queue has been created and in the debugger if you observe we are getting payload in the form of bytes so it's of our white and in where's if we see we get the batch job instance id which is which we discussed right in the concepts part that the batch job instance id is available in all the steps so we are able to see that now what we'll do is uh, we'll process one or two records so i've processed one record second third fourth okay that's fine four record and now i'll, I'll terminate uh, the runtime so that an error scenario is simulated so i'll just terminate it so this is as good as the system gets crashed now we'll so the queues should be intact still yeah so the queues are still present let me just refresh they are still there okay so now let's just run this project again in debug mode and let's see what happens 
Now I have redeployed the application and if we observe there are no logs getting generated about the loading phase and the loading phase completed instance ID created nothing but the flow directly came to this point it didn't execute all this part but it came right away to the breakpoint which is inside the bad job and I can see the same bad job instance ID getting created right 281 and if I go to the queue even that has the same ID starts with 2 ends with 6 the same thing so which means that it was able to recover from the crash so now it will complete the whole process so if I run the log if I move it ahead I don't see any uh, other phase being uh, getting generated right it's, it's just starting the logs from where it stopped so it's continuing to process the record so we have validated our understanding that it will continue from the point where it stopped and only then will it uh, move ahead with the new schedule like the scheduler will start only after that so unless and until we finish off this process uh, it won't start with the new process so this is how the reliability is getting established even after the system crash your records are safe another point to notice is see the size of the file it's around 302 kb right now right and it could be more also it, it, it gets in increased but it's 302 kb uh, and if we see uh, this is the file that i've used it's a demographs.csv and if i see the size is 64 see the amount by which the records have inflated right this this is a csv file but that particular file is having data in the form of records it's a collection collection of records and it's almost like 3.5 times of the existing size right it's 302 it's almost three more than three times uh, of the size so again that is a point that you should keep in mind mind that because in loading phase it will load the whole file and the size will definitely get inflated it will increase from the actual size so that's another thing we should keep in mind now let's try to tweak the batch block size and see the differences in the performance that we get so first we'll go with the default size and then we'll change the size of this so i have removed the logger and i have just added a plain transform which does nothing but just converts the data into let's convert it into json and we won't do anything with this data so i'll just run this note the timestamp and see uh, the time difference that we get with the batch block size set as 100. so the processing got completed and let's see the time difference so we'll capture the time from where the batch execution starts so let's see the log so this is finished processing and this is started execution of instance right so what is the timestamp that I can see over here? It's like <clears throat> okay, it's like 800 uh, at the fifth second, and then after at eight seconds, uh, 296 milliseconds, uh, it finish it finishes the processing. So it, it takes like around 200 milliseconds, so it becomes six and. Uh, then two seconds so it's around uh, two seconds and four uh, we can consider as uh, roughly around 2.5 millisecond 2.5 seconds so let's now try to change these values so let's change the batch block size to thousand i think uh, my ram can easily support uh, thousand records in memory so i'll make it as thousand so it will be hardly we have 2386 right so it will be uh, three times uh, IO operation so let's save it and redeploy and see the results what we get as of now it was 2.5 seconds approx and now let's see how much time does it take okay so it has completed the run and let's see the time it took so started execution and okay it started the execution at around 
so it's like uh, 25 seconds 441 milliseconds and then 20 second 27 seconds 280 milliseconds so this roughly calculates to around uh, 1.4 seconds which is definitely one point uh, which is definitely a second less than what we observed in the previous case in the previous case it was like 2.5 seconds approx and in this case it's hardly uh, 1.4 seconds so we have seen the performance improvement when we uh, made the batch block size to uh, 1000 because now there are only three IO operation whereas when it is it was 100 so uh, it would be more than three in that case so this is how you can get a better performance but for that you should be sure like what is the maximum amount of memory that uh, your RAM has an available memory uh, so that it can be processed then the other thing you can try out with max concurrency I would not like to uh, change this value as such because 2 into the number of cores is uh, very much sufficient when considering the blocking operation like we have only a read operation uh, over here but when it goes to the batch job then it has to read and write to the queue right so considering that uh, 2 into the number of cores is sufficient but uh, suppose you have a database over here uh, you are inserting it in that case you can consider you can find out the blocking factor and then use the formula that uh, the max concurrency should be always less than the number of uh, cores divided by 1 minus blocking factor so you should be able to find out the blocking factor and then you can calculate what should be the max concurrency as uh, otherwise if you don't want uh, then uh, let the mule use the default value which is 2 into the number of cores so this is how you can uh, improve tweak these values and improve the performance of the batch processing just to clear the point i said it's 1.4 second but it's instead it's 1.84 seconds but even if it is 1.84 second the difference between starting and ending the task it's still better than uh, 2.5 seconds so we can consider that it's still better 1.84 seconds now let's try to simulate an error scenario and see what is the behavior of batch processing in that case so i have a batch step which is transforming the payload into a json format so if i go to this transform i can see i am transforming it to json and what I am doing is essentially I am converting the code as number. I have this JSON uh, CSV file and the code is number in most of the cases but in some cases I do see it's a string like here CMB something CMB something. So some cases it's number some cases it's string. So definitely it will throw an error while uh, coercing a string uh, to a number so that's expected and uh, then we have so error will be thrown and to handle the same error I have another batch step which will in turn just create a JSON and it will not coerce it into a number we will just make it as plain thing and the idea is that we will segregate uh, the data into different files so I haven't uh, written the code uh, to put it push it into a file we just simulate and then we'll uh, uh, think of pushing it to file so idea is that the uh, records which do not have code in numerical value they will be part of some other file and which have the uh, uh, code as numerical value they will be part of other file so we are segregating it basically haven't done that in this case we'll do it later on but just simulate the error and then I have a batch aggregator which will just aggregate all the records. So let's see what uh, do we observe. Let's just uh, try to run the application. And on 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 complete, I've just added a logger, uh, which says that uh, I'll just add a logger and say that process completed. And then let's see uh, what results do we observe. So let's just run this application and see what we get 
now the batch process has been completed and we see it is evident from the log that is printed from the on completed on complete phase and we also see that uh, the exceptions uh, it is of the type uh, batch exception and the step in which it has occurred is transform and aggregate records which was the first step and the total count was 386 so 386 records have failed that is what it's trying to say now it's time to analyze the logs first of all let's see what logs we have added in the code so first log is like like it should print this counts records so the total records as we know uh, in this uh, demograph csv file were 2386 so we should find this logs 2386 times that is the case and in batch aggregator we have aggregated records just printing as it is so batch aggregator aggregates for every thousand records right so uh, possibly we should see this three times because two times and for the 386 we will have the third time aggregation so maybe we should see this three times and then we have this uh, capturing only failures right so for this we should be able to see this type of statements fail records processing and again in batch aggregator there's only 386 right and uh, the aggregator size is 1000 so we'll have only once uh, some payload printed so let's just see what uh, logs are we able to see so as, as of now what logs we saw is this is the log we saw right process completed now let's uh, check the logs what i'll do is i'll just copy this logs and push it to a notepad so that we can count also so first what we'll do is let's uh, change the language mm. okay no, JSON doesn't make sense. Okay, this looks better. Now, if we scroll up, we can only see counts, records, counts, records. Okay, so let's see where it started, where it all started. Okay, here the application got deployed and it has created an instance and then when it started processing counts records counts records counts records and then uh, an exception came okay cannot coerce array to a number okay that's fine and what does it say about this exception this is the first record to show this exception uh, on this step for this job instance subsequent records will so what it it's trying to say that uh, it shows only the first exception for a particular step and for that particular job instance other steps uh, other errors for this particular steps of this job instance won't be showed so that is for readability issues because there are two three eight six records right and if all of them fail so we'll have two three eight six errors which would be of this size so that will be ridiculous amount of logs right so it's just printing the first one so we can see only this counts records okay now let's count how many are this so these are two three eight six fine then we have also had some other log right we had this log to capture failures let's check how many of this do we have so it can't find it there's zero matches no matches found okay we'll try to understand uh, why is that even happening and let's see if we get aggregated records for step one the step one got executed right we, uh, as far as now what we can understand is that the step two itself is not executing right because if it was executing we would have got the logs which is present over here which is failed records processing but that didn't happen so we'll just see if aggregated records of first step occurred even that didn't occur okay so i think we are getting some we are learning some things from this log now let's see this uh, process completed is that present yeah that is present so what did we observe we observed that this step didn't get executed this step got executed but the aggregator didn't execute right so let's try to understand why did this happen despite of having failure records 
tracked it didn't capture it it didn't the step itself didn't get executed now if you remember in the last video while configuring i said that the max fail records has a role to play over here okay if it is set to zero which means that it won't allow any fail records what does that mean so suppose in this case here the record failed one record failed that means that even if your batch step is capturing only failures it won't allow to move to the next step the other thing to note over here is that despite we have configured it as to allow zero failure which means that in the first failure itself when we had the first failure over here if you observe we have the first failure right so the moment we have a first failure where it is the moment we have a first failure it should stop right but it doesn't stop it continues if you see we can see this count records it continued to four two three eight six time so that's a point that you should understand that even if the failure occurs in that particular step the processing for that step will continue despite of failure so failure occur it will ignore and continue so anything failed it still continued but uh, this can give you an idea that this uh, this having zero would uh, just skip the other records because one has failed but that doesn't happen that step continues to execute until it finishes processing irrespective of the fact whatever value you have set this value will only uh, affect the next step so in the next step uh, even if it is on only failures it won't ex uh, move to the next step it will just directly jump to the on complete phase so that's a point you should remember now other thing we saw that even the batch aggregator didn't execute so it's obvious if the batch uh, this process phase has failed so aggregator step won't be executed that's another point you have to keep in mind that the aggregator will also be skipped but only thing is that when the error occur it will allow the error it will fail it but it will continue to process the remaining records and then jump to the on complete phase right away so that is what happens and if we observe the logs uh, we scroll down in the logs we see this log it says that okay it says that instance so this is the instance that is created of job this particular job so job has an instance id associated with it that we learned has reached the max allowed number of failed records which was zero right so in the very first instance it record will be added to the fail list and instance will be removed from the execution pool so since it has failed it will remove the batch job instance from the execution pool once the whole uh, the step one is completed it will be removed it won't be processed any further now another point over here to observe is the object store let's go to the object store and if we see the latest timestamp that is of 1141 so it that is where i have triggered this job so i have two modifications being done so let's go to those folders one by one and see uh, what are the differences so this one is the latest one uh, 1141 others are also there but uh, this is the one that we triggered first of all let's go to the partition descriptor and see what partition is it referencing so it says that it is the instance store for that particular batch job so it's an instance store okay and if we observe this file okay and and it's having the same id isn't it if I show you the logs, this is the log, right? And it is DFAC81C0 ends with 6. And if we go to the same thing, we see that is the same one, right? So this is the one that we have. So it's the same correlation ID that we have. So it's giving the overall uh, status, and if you if we can see some uh, 
records over here saying the default batch step result which means that some exception has occurred and it, it has the summary right it's unreadable but some part we can read and understand that okay it's storing the status of the batch job over here that this particular thing has failed but other than that we have another object store which we saw this one what does this contain let's see the partition descriptor first of all what is this partition for so it has the same correlation id the bad job instance id to be precise so it has the same bad job instance id and what we see that this store is for failed records one was for the job and the other one is for the failed records right so it is having the details of the failed records now let's open one of this and observe what do we have in this file so if we observe this it's it's a huge file right let's see how many records and it is having details of all the records that are failing right so so it, it's storing all those data in this uh, failed uh, records instance so we saw that for object store it will do two partition one is for the overall bad job status and the other one is for failed record status and it will for failures it will have the details of failed records so that's another thing you should uh, keep in mind that the object store two partitions are available one is for failed and one is for the overall batch uh, status so that's another point that is worth noticing in this case so now how do we fix the problem uh, our goal was to push the failed records to this batch step so it's easy we need to go to this process records batch step now and just change this max fail records to i want minus one unlimited i i don't want to restrict it no matter how many are there just push it to this so over here instead of payload we'll see the payload later on okay what we'll do instead i'll say failures processed okay and yeah that should be enough so we should be able to see this log now let's just run the app and see what do we observe now so the execution is completed but to my surprise all the records have failed now how did this happen let's check that out why is it means uh, now uh, means half of the record should have succeeded and some of them should have failed but all of them have failed let's let's count the number of failures and so th this is the log which gives us failure okay so let's check so the count is 2386 and if we check the success one not in even those didn't succeed but it's count records this for this is for this first step and even in first step we have 2386 now let's see if we have any uh, aggregated uh, logs we had placed logger in aggregate right so let's see that if we have there so what is the log that we have in here is aggregated records let's search if we have any zero matches okay so there's possibly we have made some mistake somewhere we need to check that out okay failures processed has come and and the count is three since it was a processing failure so it has captured failure but all of them have failed right so all of them it's obvious right because uh, two three eight six records were there they failed uh, this step and they were moved to this step and uh, since the uh, the batch aggregation was three times uh, was per thousand records and the records were 2386 it got aggregated and two times for 2000 and one time for 386 so that does make sense so this is fine the failure happened over here and all the records failed all should not have failed because we know the structure of payload right what is the structure of this payload if we observe the payload where is the payload demographs.csv not all there's hardly few records right which are in this format string format so 
all should have not failed so that's something wrong we are doing we should just look at the error message once so let's just maximize this okay let's see the error message what it says okay it says cannot curse array to a number but why is it array it should have been string instead so there's something wrong okay and upon investigation i realized that when a csv file is read and the record by record is sent it's of something of this format it's an array and that is exactly what it's trying to complain it cannot coerce array to a number and that is why all the 2386 record fail and the failure step was able to process it successfully because it was meant for failure and the failure step didn't fail because we didn't do anything over here we just did payload.code so there's no coercion happening and no exception coming out so what we essentially need to do is we need to get the zeroth element because we know that there will be only one element per record so we need to change it with zero and then maybe we'll get a better result all the records won't fail only few will fail so let's just make these changes and redeploy and let's see the result so i've made the changes redeployed the app and the scheduler has been run and the batch process was completed and now we see a sensible amount of failed records which is 44 now that looks good so i'll i have copied and pasted this logs in notepad and what we'll do is we'll now try to analyze the logs so what should happen now in this case is that since it says right uh, it's saying that 44 records fail which means 2342 records were successful and total records that were processed were 2386 now since the logger in the first step is at the beginning which has count counts records in it right so it should be 2386 only because it's before uh, the transform so error occurs on the transform so it should be printed 2386 times so let's just confirm it if it's the same case let's just count it so there are 2386 matches in the entire file which does make sense now if we uh, check the aggregator log so it says that it has this term aggregated records so what do you think what should be the count see we have total successful records which are 2342 so only those will move to aggregator and the aggregation size is 1000 so 2002 for uh, 2 it will take 2000 and for three remaining 342 it will be the third time so we should be able to see three counts of it so let's just count so we are having three matches that again looks good now let's move to the failure part now in failure we had how many 44 records right if we go back to the console and see fail records are 44 so we should see this log only 44 times because this step will be executed only for failures it's evident from here it's only failure so we should be able to see this 44 times let's copy this and count the occurrences so it's perfect 44 matches in the entire file now that's as expected now let's go to the aggregator and since it's 44 right and the aggregation size is 1000 we should be able to see only once so it has one match so that again makes sense so it's perfect now and then we should have the process completed log so, uh, it should be one in count and it's even one in count and i can see this log over here so the process was completed so uh, this is how would we handle error over here so we we understood that uh, despite uh, of the error it, it it went through whole 2386 record even when uh, the max failed records were zero but when we made it as minus one which made that it will uh, allow any number of failed records to move to the next step in preview if it was zero it would not allow uh, even a single step to move to the even a single record sorry record to move to the next step but now in this case it allowed unlimited number so you can also specify your own uh, settings like three or four but in that case 
uh, after those many errors have occurred it will not it will stop moving to the next step and instead it will directly move to the on complete phase that is what we can uh, conclude from this demo now another thing that we should keep in mind that whenever it is a csv if if it comes record by record it comes in a form of array so that is why we had to then change it to zero otherwise it was throwing error like cannot coerce an array to a number whereas this code was a string so that's another point now let's make this particular scenario more meaningful and leverage this like batch aggregator properly so the idea is now i'll add a file connector i'll add a file write so we'll segregate uh, into two files so one file will have uh, uh, the one file will have the records which have so one file will have uh, records which have the numeric code uh, that would be the success file and uh, other file will have the records which have string code so let's just uh, modify the code so that we can uh, perform that particular use case so I've made the changes, I've deployed the application and I've also made a run. But before that, le let's see what changes I have done. So basically I added a write uh, file write operation and I'm just creating a success.json and inside this failed uh, batch step, I'm creating error.json. So these are the two files that I'm creating. Apart from that, I am writing in append mode uh, in the failure as well as in the uh, success uh, scenario now why am I writing in append mode is that because if see the batch aggregator size is thousand right and if I uh, as far as uh, the process is concerned we will have 2342 so this aggregator will write three times right because thousand uh, is the size so it will write three times so if it doesn't append if it overwrites so we'll get only the remaining 342 records alone we won't get the remaining 2000 so that is why i have appended now if i go uh, so th this has uh, successfully completed and see if we see 2386 are the total process records of which 232 were successful and 42 were failed and i, I can see uh, the files getting generated over here so these are all json files and if I go to the file and if I see this success.json so it's getting created successfully right all numerical values are only present whereas error.json has all uh, string type code so it's working pretty much but there's a problem the problem is such that if I observe this opening brace so if I do a control F on this and I count it I see three occurrences and that is quite obvious because the aggregation size was thousand so the first set that came the first set came until here and it came until here and it uh, appended the second set of values right so first set second set it doesn't realize that it's a JSON it has to push this value inside this array it doesn't realize it just blindly appends the files to this right and then you would find the third occurrence which is here so you'll have total three json arrays which are appended as a text it doesn't consider them as json so that's uh, a problem over here now to solve this it's uh, usually considered a good practice to use stream so what we can do is we can close this you don't need to okay what uh, we need to do some changes what we instead we can do is it's be a better approach would be to stream the data rather than aggregating so instead of aggregating in fixed size let's stream the data right because you want to push it to a file so streaming is in, uh, fine now in this case it's not a database there where we need to push a fixed size even in database you can do that uh, even in salesforce insert you can do that but there uh, ag fixed size aggregation is also a good option but here it does make sense to use streaming so let's try this out with streaming in both the cases now uh, remember uh, both the values are not allowed it says field sets size and streaming are mutually exclusive which means that you can use only one not two of them together so we have checked this let's delete those file first of all because it's appending it so that's not a good idea 
so we'll delete those files first so I've deleted the files and I have redeployed the app okay it got redeployed and it I think it completed the process okay it seems to have completed the process now let's see the files so now we have the two files generated and let's try to open and see what do we have in here so I can see all the records coming over here but the, our main concern was that the the array problem should get resolved so let's see if it is resolved or not perfect we have only one match so it considered a proper JSON array and appended all the values into that array rather than creating multiple uh, JSON arrays so that's the benefit of having a stream so whenever you need to write into a file and you need to make it a JSON or something it's better that you go with uh, the streaming idea now we can see this and now let's just confirm how many code do we have it should be three two three four two right so yeah exactly two three four two is the count that we have now let's go to uh, the error file and let's see over there how situation is so let's count the code and it's exactly 44 counts and the array is intact here it has to be in tech because even in the previous case it was the batch uh, aggregation was thousand right so uh, it only has 44 match so it it will be in one part only so it, it's going to be array either ways the only problem was with success so that is uh, where the streaming uh, is helpful so when you write to file it's better to go with a streaming than going with a fixed uh, size batch aggregator now let's try a bit of variation to just explain a concept behind the streams okay we have enabled stream and we saw that we got a perfect uh, response and uh, even uh, in the case where it was just having 2000 records it didn't create uh, three different json array it appended all the data into a single array but there are some limitations to the stream and that you should consider let me add a logger i've added a logger already and i'm printing the payload and I'm making it as output application JSON and, and then I am printing the payload okay so let me just uh, save this and rerun the application and let's see what what happens over here so it should uh, re-trigger the flow and let's see the output so the application has been deployed again and I can see uh, it has printed the whole payload over here in JSON now let's go to the file and see what changes to be observed so in this success json okay let's reload let's reload all right so in success json if you observe we have this and let's see the opening uh, square brace we should have two uh, opening square brace right because it has appended the second json array and it's part of a new session so it has up the file was in append mode so we should have two and we are having two it seems yeah we are having two and the second one was created by the current run but why is it empty it's an empty array right so it, it lost all the values so what can we understand from this it tells us that this particular stream is a non repeatable stream it's basically an iterator that you're getting and it's a forward only iterator which means that once you consume the iterator there's no going back you cannot reconsume it so it's lost it it printed everything over here and now you're not able to write it to the file so that's a peculiarity of the stream that is present in batch aggregator and you should always keep this in mind so if you are going to do some operations on that particular stream while aggregating make you are going to lose that stream so if only if your target is to push it into a database or directly write it to some file only then in that case go with streaming if you in other case if you go with streaming you will lose the data that's a catch for streams and again uh, here for errors we have nothing right no stream uh, means uh, no consumption of uh, this payload so in that case we should find two uh, json array and that is exactly what we are able to see two json arrays copied and pasted now it won't append it won't insert into the same array right it, it won't happen that because it doesn't have any idea of what the data is in the file it's not that smart enough to find that out that was part of a previous session so it won't do that but 
whatever data is there it's 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 perfect it's it, it has created two arrays and we didn't consume that so that is a quite important behavior that you should keep in mind before implementing a stream and if you ha are having confusions regarding stream what it is how it works i recommend you to visit uh, the video that i have created on streams uh, in mules so that would give you a better understanding that what is a repeatable what is a non repeatable stream and what are iterables do visit that video now i have again done a slight variation to this logger the variation that i have done is i have just removed uh, the output application json header from here and i'm just printing this payload so what do you think will it consume let's see the log and if i go to the log and if i check the logs i should be able to see some logger message processor okay so here's the log and if we observe the log it's a streaming aggregator buffer iterator wrapper it's not printing anything it's just giving uh, printing the reference of uh, the object so basically the payload wasn't consumed so if we see that uh, if we notice uh, streams are lazy unless and until you don't do anything with the stream it it won't be consumed and that is what is exactly happening over here it's not getting consumed because we are just trying to print uh, the reference of the uh, object we are not consuming the object so it's just printing this uh, reference it's it's giving the class and the location of where the object is stored in heap and if we go to the success json we can see this is from the previous step when we consume the stream by adding an output directive of output application json so it got consumed so it was blank but now it wasn't consumed so so it's giving us the array with the complete data so that's a catch that you should keep in mind while using stream so if you are consuming the stream then in that case uh do not go with the streaming because uh, this is non repeatable stream so keep this in mind when uh going ahead uh, with stream because then you might encounter such problem where you consume the stream and then push it to some other processor and you get a blank payload now let's try to understand the variable behavior in batch for the sake of simplicity i have removed the file operation because that was a, a slightly taxing job instead what i'll do is i'll just take a very plain simple collection of numbers from 1 to 10 and i'll run a batch job on it okay uh, just to understand the uh, behavior of variables that, that's it that's the objective uh, of doing so so 1 to 10 uh, would be the numbers and then in this transform if the number is even it's allowed to pass through if it is not uh, it will fail and it will throw exception and i have only one step so uh, i'm not handling those exception and uh, then i am logging the details before but before we get started with variables let's understand another thing over here which is the target so this target uh, by default uh, comes into a payload if you are not setting any target you can set it exclusively to a variable or something or if you do not set it it will automatically come to a payload the whole process is asynchronous so let's see uh, what comes into the payload uh, so i i'm trying to print the payload over here and so basically this payload will have the target uh, whatever the details of batch process is there you can manually set this in this target uh, section or if you do not set set it automatically sets the payload with that data all right so now let's uh, quickly run this application and and see what is the payload that uh, the batch job creates by default so it's getting deployed so the application has been deployed and now let's check the log first so the error has occurred it was obvious because 1 to 10 has odd numbers but uh, before the whole thing uh, before this thing got processed we already have a log because this is an asynchronous process right so we have the log and in the log we can see there are details so this is a json object which has a creation time record count result result is not yet generated so uh, so it, it it doesn't have much data it just says elapsed time in milis is zero because it was just started the moment uh, the batch scope starts uh, 
and the load and dispatch fa load phase finishes only then uh, this uh, gets generated so if you see there is loaded records is 10 and you have all the relevant details and along with the batch of instance id so this particular thing gets populated only after the loading phase in which the batch uh, job instance id is generated and it is linked to the persistent queue and the status is ex ex executing so maybe uh, you can use this metrics for uh, administration purpose or something and then track the details that is what we can do now let's uh, move on to the variables so in uh, for loop what we usually uh, try to do is like we could collect the data uh, outside the for right uh, like something like this we used to add a set variable and we used to name it as accumulator and we try to accumulate data into this right so let's make it as output application java and make it as an array blank array which can grab the data so what i'll do i'll do over here and i'll name it as same uh, accumulator so that the data gets accumulated into this and output application java and what we'll do is fares dot accumulator it it seems to be accessible inside now let's see let's add payload to it and let's also log the data to see what we are getting so i'll log it where start accumulator okay now let's try to run the application and see what output do we get So the application got redeployed and if you see the logs, it's all blank. It's a blank array, blank array. The data can be accessed, but with every new record, the data gets lost. So we were able to access the data and the data was a blank array. So we are able to access it. But if we try to add the data, it gets lost. We are adding the data, right? So for the next record, it should have been available. So it's not. And it does make sense why because well, the thing you should keep in mind is that for every record every record uh, in the batch step which is coming will have is its own instance of uh, the variable although the external variable can be accessible but it cannot be updated that's the catch over here <clears throat> because it's parallel processing right even if you create a variable inside this scope and uh, you try to access it in other record that's not possible because how would the thread understand it belongs to the it belongs to which record and even if you try to update the external variable from inside then there would be a complex situation where the thread might have to wait because the uh, the if if suppose you assume that you want to update the variable from inside uh, this scope to uh, the set variable what happens is ideally is that first of all the parent thread doesn't wait for this one it creates a child it spawns a child thread and just moves ahead so this variable is just available in the parent thread it's not uh, and it's also available in child thread but the child thread cannot modify this particular variable so if you know about uh, thread local we have inheritable thread local so it's not an inheritable thread variable which can be updated so and even if they gave an option to update then that would be a complete mess because multiple threads would try to update this variable and in every case they would have to acquire the lock on this because in if in multi-threading you do not acquire a lock and you just keep the things as it is then you know how bad of a output you can get get right so so, so for that reason uh, the updation of external variables is not allowed only internal variables stay and with each record with every single record you will have a new instance of that particular variable and that is quite evident over here if, if we even if we added it and we try to print it like first the input was one and we added one to the same variable in the next record it got lost it, it just had the parent value original value that it had and uh, so that is the case and it, had it been another step so a particular record retains the variable so if record one came over here and it moves on to the next step 
it again retains the value it's the same value so if it was one in this case and it moved to second it would have uh, retained the same value so just to realize the behavior i have added another batch step which accepts all the records successful and failures so what did we see uh, for the record uh, first record the variable got set and what i said is that like every record will have its instance of variable throughout multiple batch steps okay so since uh, in this case we can see it's blank because in the first step uh, first record comes and it has nothing but in the second case again the value is lost it's not getting accumulated okay so what i have done uh, in the first step i have updated suppose a value one comes in okay and i am setting the variable as what i am doing is i am adding to the array i am adding one but when the next record comes it won't be able to see one but if the same record one goes to batch step two it should have the value visible and which, which is evident over here see one three two four six eight ten five so we can see all the ten values being populated over here the order is random obviously because it's multi-threaded so that's okay but uh, you you should get the point that each record has its own variable and its visibility is until that record alone so in in the second step the value was populated the variable got populated and because of that it was visible in the second ba batch step so that is the point over here that you should uh, keep in mind now again same things exist for aggregator if you try to view that variable in this aggregator you won't be able to view that aggregator that's because again it doesn't know right there are multiple threads and it, it, it doesn't know which record would be present so we'll we'll, we'll try to see that let's let's print this accumulator let me just remove this batch step we don't need this anymore and what i'll do i'll just print accumulator and let's see what do we get okay all right let me save and let's get it redeployed and let's see okay so it has printed so all of them uh, firstly it's blank then again see we were not able to access the accumulated values we were just able to access what was the variable set at the beginning in the parent thread which is uh, in the in the parent flow whatever the value was set it's only able to uh, get that value so that is a catch that variables if created inside a batch step then in that case it will be available only per record throughout all the steps in the process phase okay but it won't be uh, accessible in the batch scope if the variable is set outside the batch job so whatever is its existing value only that will be uh, only that will be replicated inside the batch step you can also modify that value in the batch step and that modified value will be available to the next batch step for that particular record it, its visibility will be per record and again any modifications to the external value will not be visible to the batch aggregator other than that we have another variable which is a batch job instance id and it is used to uh, retrieve the batch job instance and again in on complete phase in on complete phase we can have a payload which will give us all the details of what processing has been done so let's just view that payload also so that we understand what all metrics does this on complete phase payload contains let me just save and it should print it let's see what comes up okay processing has been done and if we observe if you observe the two payload this is the payload which uh, was printed uh, uh, as a target so th th this payload is printed by this logger which is outside the batch scope and which is effectively the output of a batch uh, job so initially it had all these details and it was in status executing 
but uh, the on complete phase doesn't have this particular data it only has this result so if we see that's the bad job result that we are having it's a bad job result object so we are having on complete phase exception obviously there was no exception in the on complete phase there was in the process but not in on complete there was no loading phase exception okay that's fine total records processed were 10 time in millis 360 milliseconds failed on complete phase false so these are all the details that you can utilize uh, and store it somewhere to know that what was the status of a particular uh, batch uh, batch job yeah so this is how you can uh, utilize variables uh, while doing the batch uh, while running the batch job now let's come to the conclusion by comparing for each parallel for each and bad job so when should you go with the for each when you think you have pretty less data maybe hundreds or 200 or maybe 500 records and you want the processing sequence to be maintained in that case you can go with a for each because for each will though sequential it provides a better performance at the beginning at the initial phases and with low day, low records less amount of records you don't have to worry about anything it, it, it just gives you a good performance and you can accumulate the data into a variable even the end payload doesn't accumulate everything so you can accumulate the whole data in the payload so in that case go ahead with a for each and if you don't want to accumulate that's even better just trigger if you want to call any other api or maybe push it to database go ahead with a for each when to use a parallel forage when the data is moderate more than uh, the for the use case of forage if the data is like maybe 1000 2000 records go with forage now you do not want to maintain the processing sequence like if it, the data is from 1 to 10 it can be processed like 5 will process first 2 will process later something like that so the sequence won't be maintained but the aggregated payload that you get at the end will have its sequence intact for example if the data uh, array is from 1 to 10 in the input the output aggregated data you will get as 1 to 10 only it won't happen that the sequence will get jumped but only the processing that would be done that would be in random order so so there is again another thing over here to consider that if your payload is huge if those 1000 to 2000 records are json structures and they make the payload huge and you are less on memory in that case you will encounter out of memory so it's safe to go with 2000 or 3000 records i don't think those would create pressure on the memory they won't uh, get to out of memory but if it's a massive payload it's better not to go with a parallel for each because it gives you better performance initial and throughout processing also since it's parallel but the aggregation it does and loads the whole data into the memory that is pretty massive and you should consider that now let's come to the last which is a bad job which we have been talking about so far in this video so batch job is basically used to deal with massive data like you have a file with millions of record maybe you want to synchronize two databases with millions of record it's one time synchronization in that case is use bad job now bad job is quite taxing process and this taxing is because the bad job is quite reliable process right so why is it reliable because it has the persistent queue then it has the object store which stores the process id it also stores the failure data and everything so since it is a persistent queue it has to load the whole file so if you have a 1 gb file it will again load the whole 1 gb file so and and it the size will get inflated so obviously it it get expanded and once it is processed obviously the file gets removed from the memory and it's in the persistent memory so this thing uh, the overhead that it has to do is all for the sake of reliability so if reliability is your point of concern then you should you definitely choose a bad job and when if it uh, if reliability comes then it comes about uh, resiliency so it does a graceful handling of system crash so if your system crashes it won't happen that you have to start the processing from point one it will continue from the point where it stopped and we also saw it in the demo so that's a, a plus point over here then uh, the performance is slow initially obviously the the reason we didn't see any performance lag because the file size was how much like 
hardly 300 kb which uh, when loaded into the persistent queue became 300 or 400 kb something like that so it was quite small but if you have file like 500 mb 1 gb that will definitely take time and it would be visible you can try out with a huge file and you would see the loading phase stuck at for point for maybe like five to ten minutes and then it will start so initial performance is quite slow but the throughput is it does increases due to parallel processing between uh, in the process phase and you also get the advantage of fine grain error handling otherwise in the parallel forage or forage you will have to go with the try catch block and uh, do all sorts of stuff here, here you can just add uh, you just add another batch step and add all failures and do what you want to do in that so it, it, it basically gives you a clean code which is quite easy to read so every uh, element has its own purpose forage has its own purpose parallel forage has its own purpose batch has its own purpose you have to weigh the benefits and the problems you face with this if the benefits are better if the pros are better than the cons then you should choose uh, the better option so you should think accordingly here the bad job is reliable gives you better performance later on but initially it's quite low so you won't it, it doesn't make sense to use bad job for this trivial operations so you should decide accordingly which one to choose so ending notes if parallel for each or for each is a wheel loader bad job is a bulldozer and you know the bulldozer might be slow because of the wheels it has but the wheel order is fast but the amount of work a bulldozer can do can never be done by a wheel order so so that's how you can relate a bad job with forage or parallel forage so that's it for this video i hope you would have found the video useful and uh, it might help you in your real life project so thanks for watching